Oh, hey there, buddy. I'm Canadian Moose, and today I'm going to show you how I make City Skylines 2 look realistic. I made a video like this at the start of the year, but the game has had numerous updates since then, so this video will replace the original. I will be showcasing two styles, one for spring, summer, and autumn, and one for winter. If you would like to see how I use detailing and vanilla props to make winter in City Skylines 2 look realistic, let me know in the comments below. Before we dive into the game, you will need to head over to PDX Mods, either the website or in the game menu. If you don't want to use mods, I will still show some of my vanilla settings that can help you. But there are two mods I use for the visuals of my game just to give it that extra push. The first mod we'll be getting is Preserve Photo Mode. While this mod does flag in Skive, I have had no issues with it. And while it is recommended you switch to Lumina, I prefer using Preserve Photo Mode. Preserve Photo Mode allows you to have all changes you make in Photo Mode remain after you close out of Photo Mode. The second mod is Time and Weather Anarchy. This allows us to set certain times of day, control the temperatures, adjust the rain values, and clouds, amongst many other things. With Preserve Photo Mode and Time and Weather Anarchy added to our playset, let's launch the game. With the game loaded, let's open Options. Select Graphics and then select Show Advanced. In the previous graphics tutorial, I was using DLSS, but somewhere along the way it has significantly worsened, and I find these settings for TAA to be far better. And if you you do have the ability to enable AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, that further enhances it. I have also noticed that TAA makes the textures look sharper and makes this fence, whose visual appearance was ruined in the June update, look a little bit better. If you struggle with FPS, turning off volumetric clouds can help improve that. But for me, I like the visual effect of clouds causing areas of my build to go dark when the cloud is blocking the sun. When global illumination quality is enabled, at certain times of day, and most notably at sunrise and sunset, you will notice visual artifacting on the sides of buildings, surfaces, and so on. If you turn off global illumination quality, it gets rid of that. For terrain, if you set the target patch size to 4, you can make water render at farther distances. Now it's not a massive improvement, but it sure beats the base setting. Level of detail I have set to max, but the lower that number is, the better your FPS, and the higher you make it, the more your FPS FPS may struggle in certain areas of your build. My PC can handle it, so I set it to the highest value. And lastly, I set MIP bias to zero, which helps with the rendering of objects and buildings in the game. Now that we have our vanilla settings sorted, this should help give the game a better feel and look visually. However, the base game settings don't allow us to tone the colors of the game, and that's where the Preserve Photo Mode mod comes in. In game, let's open up Photo Mode, which is built into the game. So if you are playing vanilla, you will have this option as well. We're using a town called Pine Grove for this tutorial, a build I made over on Twitch, and if you would like to see the building of any of the towns featured in our tutorials, you can catch me live on Twitch and YouTube every Monday, and just on Twitch on Wednesdays and Fridays. In photo mode, select color, enable saturation, and keep it at zero. Set temperature to 10, and shadows to 0.200. Now you can tweak these to what you like, and those are the settings I use for the build set in spring, summer, and autumn. Now let's take a look at time and weather anarchy, and for builds set in spring, summer, or autumn, I usually set the temperature anywhere from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. I disable precipitation, and I like having some light clouds in the sky, so I set that slider to 20. I also set the weather options to summer, as I find this gives the best colors in the game, as the colors do change per season. Hour of the day and day of the year are purely personal choices based on the lighting you like the best and will vary from map to map. So find something that works for you. Every November to February, we work on a winter town on the live streams, and I've made some adjustments to my color settings for it. Starting in photo mode under the color option, I set saturation to zero, temperature to minus 1.500, and shadows to 0.100. Over in time and weather anarchy, I keep most of the settings the same. I find that by setting the weather option, 
mentions to summer, it makes winter look even prettier in this game. I set the temperature to anywhere between minus 5 to minus 20, and I set precipitation to 1% because I really like the look of snow falling in this game, and it gives me a nice, minimal, small amount of snow flying by the screen. So, those are the base game settings I run and the in-game settings for two different styles of builds. Hopefully this helps you get your game looking better, and if you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know what topics you would like to see me tackle in future videos. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video, stop by the Discord to stay connected to an amazing Skylines community, and stay up to date on all things Canadian Moose and City Skylines too. Videos like this are made possible by the amazing supporters over on Patreon. I'm Canadian Moose, and I will catch you right here for another video. Happy building.